American-born Chinese is not a typical coming-of-age story. The new Disney Plus streaming series follows teenager Jin Wong as he tries to balance his life at a predominantly white high school with his life at home with his Chinese immigrant parents. And even more worlds collide when he becomes entangled in a battle of mythological Chinese gods. The series, which features this year's Academy Award winners Michelle Yeoh and Ki Hui Quan, is loosely based on the groundbreaking graphic novel of the same name. Gene Luen Yang is the author of that book, and he's one of the show's executive producers. Gene, first of all, I, as far as I can tell, we're not related. Yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, I think ancient Yangs were just very good at having families. That's it. But we are both uh, American-born children of Chinese immigrants. This right. series plays a lot on uh, self-identity, on, self, on, on assimilation. How much of that uh, it comes from your own life? Well, the book, which came out in 2006, it's fiction, but I pulled very, very heavily from my own life experience. I never met a magic monkey, but I did grow up in a neighborhood that was predominantly not the same as me. You know, I grew up in a predominantly white neighborhood. I went to a predominantly white school, and I did go through a period of time when I felt embarrassed of all of the things about myself that made me different from the people around me. That carried on into the show. I think the, the book is just from me, but the show is from a whole bunch of us. And many, many of the folks who worked on the show, both in front of and behind the camera, had that same experience of going through a period of their life where they weren't settled about who they are. Along those lines, I want to play a clip from the show. It's where the main character meets a new student at his high school. Hi, you. Hi. I didn't to meet So sorry, but, but I, my Chinese isn't super good. Oh. Uh, well, this is Wayne Chung. Wei Chen. He's a new student and he's Chinese, like you. Uh, okay. I thought that you could show him around since you two have so much in common. Uh, we do? So for the rest of the day, he's gonna be your shadow. Sorry, my what? He's gonna tag along with you to all of your classes, except English, because he's ESL and math. He's way ahead of you in math. It's a funny scene, but there's a lot going on there. What were you trying to show there? that scene was written by Kelvin Yu, who uh, came from Bob's Burgers. That's where a lot of the, the uh, humor comes from. And in that scene, there are these two boys, Jin, who is an ABC, an American-born Chinese, and Wei Chen, who comes from Asia. Um, and in a lot of ways, their, their, their relationship kind of symbolizes Jin's own relationship with his cultural heritage. Like, it, at first, he's really embarrassed by this new friend, right? But as the friendship progresses, he realizes that, that that friend, Wei Chen, is actually connected to a much wider and much deeper world. For a lot of us who are immigrants' kids, at first we're embarrassed of our parents' culture and of the kids at our school that come from that culture. But as we get older, we realize that our parents' culture is actually connected to, to something much deeper and much wider than we first imagined. And the character getting involved or getting caught up in the, the mythological uh, story of the Monkey King. Is that sort of him re-engaging with his heritage? Oh, absolutely. Monkey King is arguably the most important figure in Chinese mythology. Uh, if you go to China, if you go to Japan, you'll see Monkey King all over the place. He's on lunch boxes and T-shirts, and he's also part of classic literature. So uh, in this in this story that we tell, both in the book and in the show, the Monkey King kind of symbolizes all of that. It symbolizes this wider world of Chinese mythology and Chinese wisdom that the main character learns about and gets to know. The last time you were on the show, that you, you talked about how you liked graphic novels because of the interplay between pictures and words. And when the graphic novel came out in 2006, it was notable in part because of this, the way you told the story, it's sort of three separate uh, stories that get seemingly unrelated that get wrapped up at the end. When you brought it from the page to the screen, did you have to lose some of that? Because it's a television series, because we're, we're doing eight episodes in the first season, um, the collisions happen differently. The, the world of Jin Wong and his, his normal high school life, it collides with the world of the mythological gods right at the end of the very first episode. And then we do have this third world, this world of a sitcom that stars a character who's kind of like an embodiment of all of the, the Chinese and Chinese-American stereotypes that haunted so many of us when we were growing up. That world collides, 
I think, in a really beautiful way in episode seven of the first season. I want to talk about that character because in the book, you call him Chin Key, yeah. which is obviously, you know, playing off the uh, uh, racial slur that has been applied to, to Chinese. And I've read that you were feared that because of that character, this would That's never right. be adapted for the screen. How did you solve that problem? Well, I kind of didn't want it to be adapted, you know, not not directly from the book, because I was always worried that that cousin character that you're talking about would, if it ever got adapted, he would show up on YouTube as these disembodied clips, you know, decontextualized. And that would be the exact opposite of what I was trying to do in the book. They took that fear that I had and they made it a plot point in the very first episode. So in the very first episode, we see the main character being haunted by these clips on social media of this character who kind of embodies all these negative Chinese and Chinese American stereotypes. Uh, and in doing that, I think Kelvin in his writer's room teach the viewer how to think about that character. Are there things in this television adaptation that you admire, that you wish you had thought of when you, when you wrote the, the uh, graphic novel? Well, I mean, the big thing is that it's in television, right? It's a totally different medium from the, the comic book or the graphic novel. And I think the team that created this television series, they are experts at what they do. Uh, one of the things that I admire the most is actually the way they choreograph the action. There's no, like, you can have action in a comic book, but nothing's actually moving. It's all still still images. It's not only fun to, to look at, it also expresses character. They were so careful about all of the fight choreography and about making sure that the fights, the punches and the kicks actually express something about the inner motivations of all the characters. That I, I deeply admire. Gene Luen Yang is uh, the author of the graphic novel, American Born Chinese, and one of the executive producers of the streaming series, American Born Chinese. Gene, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you so much, John.